two variables actually points on the same variable, you can have false positive. So imagine here, this node, or this node, is aliasing the top node here. So actually you would have a complete graph here, and no bugs at all. You have the malloc, you have the free, and then the malloc leads to free, so no bugs. But when you have aliasing problems, then you say, oh, those don't alias, so I have a bug, I have a malloc bug, I have free bug, but this is just because your alias analysis is too weak, so depending on what kind of data, like this is alias analysis, so it's rather more uh, elaborated than uh, data flow analysis itself. But this is the kind of problem you can have when you manipulate such graphs. Is, is the graph clear? It's, no? The letters are not so clear. No, uh, as I said, don't, don't, uh, it's not so clear for me either. <laughs> no, I, I don't see what's written in the letter here, but it's the name of the register and everything, so it doesn't matter really what's written in here, in, in there. It's just, it's the dependencies between the variables, so it, you're like A, B, C, whatever. So just what, what's important to understand is that whenever you have a green node, it means that the, it's the return value of a malloc, and when you have a red node, it's the parameter of a free. So normally, if everything goes right, the return value of malloc becomes the parameter of free at some point, right? But if you do the relation between variables, sometimes this doesn't happen. So, for example, in that case, the, the output of malloc isn't passed to a free because the two graphs are not linked, right? If this was linked to that, everything would be fine. But here, this is not the case. And as I said, maybe this is not a true bug, maybe it's a deficiency of the analyzer because actually you have an alias that you haven't computed properly. So here, this could alias to here, but your analyzer is too weak or it was just implemented quick and dirty and everything, and you lack, you lack analysis power or you lack analysis techniques to actually figure out the alias. So you say there is a bug, but it's a false positive. Second technique, so this was a data flow analysis, so it's just one, one example of property you could figure out with just simple data flow analysis. You have lots of different data flow analysis techniques that I'm not going to develop right now. Second technique is called model checking. So model checking, I've seen some model checking experts in there. Um, so model checking is a formal, uh, formal verification technique that is based on a state exploration. So you will represent the program as, say, an automata, and then you actually um, go from the entry point of the automata and you see if you can reach a state that is, that is not um, satisfying the specification. So I'm going to be clear uh, about that uh, in a, with an example on the next slide. So in order to specify properties, you have lots of different uh, languages, uh, say LTL, um, linear temporal logic. So that allows you, just an example here, uh, G means like always. So you say always when you have the predicate alloc x, which means you call alloc an alloc function, when you have alloc x, then all the time x should be different than zero. So if this, if this uh, formula is not true, you're gonna have a problem, um, spef the specification is not going to be um, prop properly implemented. Basically, would you would detect a zero location. So the, let, let's go for the example uh, straight away. So imagine this very simple program so you have a, a variable that is called pad, it's zero, and you have variables that is, that is mode, it's an integer. So here we just check if mode is, is 32, or like M32 or M64, so imagine, this is a, a fictional example, I should say, this is not a true example, this is just for pedagogical purpose. If mode is not M32 or is not M64, then nothing happens to the pad, pad variable, so it stays zero. And because the only constraint that you enforce on, the, on val is val bigger than eight, so val could be zero too, 
So val times two plus pad could be zero. So when you write the corresponding automata for this program, you can see that you have a path in the automata that actually leads to those constraints. So you have the size that is between 0 and 16, and at the same time, you have an allocation, and you see that size could be 0, given the constraint on the size. So um, this is a pretty like poor man's example for model checking, and I'm really sorry for all the experts. Um, but this is just like a matter of introducing uh, um, um, the, the, this, this technique of model checking. So here, if you go from the top and then you follow what happened in the E for the else of M32, M64, you see that you can never reach a state where the constraint on the size um, allows a zero location. So basically, if we go there, we know that no bug is going to happen. So as you can see, this is different from data flow analysis because here we have, we represent the state space explicitly, unlike data flow analysis. So any question about that? So when you have this, uh, for example, you have um, uh, a new, and then you have a free, or you have, for example, um, uh, a malloc, and then you have a delete, and you have, you know, this mix of between a pure C and uh, C++ allocation methods, then, then you have trouble too, if you don't track that. With this, should be pretty effective, right? Um, well, uh, I'm presenting multiple different techniques, so yeah, you can, this kind of, the, the kind of property you describe is actually called type state, um, type state um, properties. So type state properties are all the properties that can be uh, represented by fi a finite state automata. So as long as you can represent the property using a finite state automata, then it's, yeah, model checking is very, very well suited for that. So malloc, uh, malloc free, use after free, all those things, you know, all those things in the type state, type state properties. Any more question about that? Nope. Okay. So what's good about model checking? It's a universal technique. So you actually give a formula. You don't say you don't hard code an algorithm. You give a formula. So. I gave a very, a very stupid formula, a very stupid and simple formula about, uh, like, f in LTL, but you can actually write the formula in whatever language you want as soon as you have uh, the proper translation to automata. So you have lots of existing tools in Microsoft. We have Slam, for example. Um, it was used on, like, it was very successful. It found really thousands of bugs in drivers. But it doesn't scale, right? Because you have to represent the state space explicitly. So, as, as long as the, the program is big enough, then model checking doesn't finish, or like even you cannot even construct the automata. It depends on you have on the fly techniques and everything. But basically, um, for big programs, this technique doesn't work. And sorry for the big expert who do symbolic model checking and everything, but we can talk about this later too. Okay, still improving. So still improving is a third technique. So all the three techniques are, are rather independent. You can have intersection between them, but you can make them work independently. So in theorem proving, you construct a logical formula that represents the program. And this formula is called the verification condition. So what happened is that you put assertion in the program. So when I, I say assertion, though like assert, it doesn't have to be runtime, but assertions are, are useful in order to check the condition that you want to check. So say you can instrument the program statically to add assertions to be checked. And then if the ver verification condition imply the assertion at the location of the assertion, then all is fine because the program actually implies the specification. So it means everything is going to work properly. However, if the verification condition doesn't imply the assertion, then it means that there is a condition, there is a possibility in the program that the assertion is false. So I'm going to give an example, it's going to be very clear. Let's take this example, same example, exactly same example. Pad is zero, 
So this is a atomic formula where, where pad is zero. We call it F1. Then we have the formula F2, that is F1, a conjunction of F1 and psi equal val time two, and val is smaller than eight, or smaller, equal to, smaller or, or equal to eight. So this is just derived from the syntax of a program, right? We continue. Here we enter the first condition, pad is not zero anymore, it becomes size of T32, and the size doesn't change, and the constraint on val doesn't change. We have the same here for the other case, where pad is equal to size of T64, and size is the same, has the same constraint, val has the same constraint. And then we have the merge point. So the merge point introduces this junction, because we don't know anymore what the value of pad pad can be zero, because if we haven't entered at all the if or the else if, then pad could still be zero. So we have the same constraint on size, same constraint on val. However, pad can be zero, or it can be size of t32, or it can be size of t64. And here, the assertion that we want to check here, because we have an allocation, the assertion is that size should always be different than zero. So we actually check does F5 implies all the time that size is different than zero? In that case, it doesn't, right? So we have what we call a precondition violation. So a precondition is a formula that you expect to be true at the beginning of the function. Also, you have a post condition that is a formula that is true at the, at the end of the function when the function returns. So here, if F5 doesn't imply size is different than zero, then you have a precondition violation and it gives you basically a location, a static analysis alert. So this is how works the tool that we use for detecting zero size heap allocation in the Windows kernel. It's called Havoc. Havoc um, is based on the Boogie theorem prover. So Boogie has a page on Cotplex, boogie.cotplex.com. Um, that allows you to use it for your own project. It's even open source. So basically, Boogie has its own intermediate presentation and uh, does the construction of the verification condition for you. So this is very useful. Basically, what you would have to do if you want to use that is to do a translator from C to the Boogie intermediate representation, and then all the analysis happens on Boogie programs. So. If you are curious about this project, you have this uh, research, uh, research Max, uh, Microsoft research page. Um, I've been a power user of Havoc, so it's developed in a different team than mine. Um, however, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with internals now. Um, it's a very handy tool, and I really highly recommend a, a view of that page. It works mostly for C programs. We st just started um, to apply it for C++, but it's still a work in progress, so we don't have any results about C++ programs yet. But it's, it's really, really working very well for C programs. And it has a detailed user manual, so you can see um, all the formats of annotation. When I say annotation, this is a precondition, postcondition, or the assertions that you can write. So it has a deta uh, detailed user manual for, for those annotations. So in the security team, we use that tool in order to find new bugs. Also, when we're aware of a bug, um, we try to find variation of that bug. So bugs in the same area that look the same, you know. So whenever we're aware of something that looks really fishy, we check the whole source code, the whole code base of Microsoft for the same kind of pattern so that we can uncover other vulnerabilities. Very quick picture of, of the tool. So you have the translator from C to Boogie. Boogie PL, PL stands for programming language. So Boogie has its own intermediate form I mentioned before. So Boogie PL is the intermediate form of Boogie. So we give, we give this translator a C program to translate. We give it annotations. Also, we give it a memory model. So the memory model basically is a set of axioms that um, make explicit uh, how act um, updates and read from the from the memory. So depending on the architecture, you might want to have different axioms for the memory model. Say you have ARM, um, the weak memory model, and everything. Those are, well, those would be different axioms than say for Intel. And then, once we have all those information, 
we take the boogie program, which is a BPL file, we pass it to the 